have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a remote mic to you. The uh, Abby and Olivia will they'll hold the mic. They will not hand you the mic, but they'll get it close enough for you to ask, ask your question. Then when we're done, we go up the elevator to the second floor for the players, and then uh, again the baseball stadium test box is open uh, to work. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, hope we can continue to do this and looking forward to having y'all today. I warn you, be careful uh, today because we've got uh, probably have to go inside due to the rain. So it's going to be a very confined uh, space for us. It's really tight out there. So you be on your own. Uh, we don't have any liability for you, Chip. Okay. So make sure you cover yourself when they come flying on the sideline over there. Um, Excited to get to work on these guys. You know, we didn't get to play them last year uh, with the COVID uh, kind of experience we had uh, headed to Nashville, where our, our fan base always does a tremendous job and turns out uh, excited about that. Uh, we'll have to prepare for a, an early um, preparation because it's very, very different when you have pregame meal at possibly 7 o'clock, 7.30. Um, so that'll be different for us. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is Excited about the uh, dogs on tour um, and, and the money that the, 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 our pro golfers are raising. I want to give some awareness to that. And uh, those guys are challenging everybody to make pledges for the number of birdies they make. So um, somebody told me I needed to make a pledge. So I'm pledging uh, a dollar per birdie for those guys, which you don't think will be much. But somebody told me that could get anywhere from five to $10,000. But those guys are giving back to the university. And I think it's great. Anybody that plays here, uh, as an amateur and then goes on to become a professional and be able to give back, uh, which those pro golfers have done. I think it's a tremendous uh, honor for them to do that and want to help out with that. So with that, we'll open it up. Uh, Cedric's a guy who we've always thought was really talented. We went down and recruited him out of New Orleans, and he's got a wonderful family, and uh, he's got relatives uh, right in the Cobb County area that uh, have come over and come to games, and I know his family comes up and stays with. So he's an exciting, really a great kid, very, very sharp kid who uh, uh, processes information really well, You know, makes decisions and protections. Uh, make Mike makes Mike points. Does a lot of good things for our team. Um, I think his growth was uh, fast forwarded through uh, Warren being injured. He would have gone a lot with the uh, twos anyway, but he was got, he got thrown in with the ones. Got a lot of good work and uh, grew and, and got better. His accuracy with snaps has continued to improve and must continue to stay uh, at a high rate because the number one thing to success for an offense is number one getting the snap, and he's done a nice job of that. Uh, he, he he's had a couple you know plays in each game that make you go what what, what were you thinking there you know and he's he's got to get those out you can't have you, know, you may get beat physically and the, very rarely does he get beat physically but you can't have mental lapses or uh, you know do things on your own and I think that part he's still a work in progress but I love his work ethic I love the way he practices and leads and you can tell he's going to be a, 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 a the kind of guy that leads in the right direction for the future for this team. <clears throat> hey Coach, I just wondered how much uh, will Darnell Washington and Tyke Smith be able to ramp up this weekend? Is it possible they play this weekend? We haven't ruled out this weekend. Um, they are back. They were running at the end of last week, weight bearing, like running on their own. So uh, we've thought all along this would be the, the target uh, this week or next. Um, but can't say they're going to be clear for this game. Uh, I'll find out a lot more today because they're going to be able to run, do some exercises, uh, not necessarily be in their groups, but they're going to be running and accelerating on their own, not just uh, on the underwater and what we call the Alter G, where they have uh, not 100 percent of their weight. They're on 100 percent of their weight as of Thursday, Friday. Um, we're moving them forward, and uh, we'll see where they are uh, today. Um, yeah, we, we, we promote depth in really our whole special teams. We share time, offense. Um, we play a lot of players, defense. We play a lot of players. So 
I mean, it's not just a defensive thing. We sell that as a team because I personally believe it, it helps morale. I think it helps conditioning, especially during the hot months we're, we're still playing in. And uh, if you've got players that are good enough to play, they deserve to play. So we play a lot of guys. And um, I don't think that uh, – here's, here, here's how we practice. If you're a two and you're not going to get enough reps, you go down on the other field and you get them. And when you've got players in your program texting you, Coach, can I please go on a scout team so I can get some good work against, you know, Warren McClendon or Jamari Saylor, that's when you know you got a good culture. Because they're trying to get reps against better people rather than staying down with the defense and getting three of eight. They go down the other field and get five of eight. And you may think that's minute, but for me, that – is everything we're about. That's what our culture is built on, is built on how do you go against better players so you get better. And um, that's that's how we get depth because they practice against good people. Coach, uh, JT was in, and you both talked about that he wasn't necessarily 100% last week. Uh, just wondering how he came out of the game. Is, is, is he, did he hold up okay uh, after all that play? And do you foresee any kind of rotation at the quarterback position going forward? Yeah, I think JT came out of the game pretty clean. I, I, he had, they had the one sack, but he was down before he got hit. Uh, I'll know more today as far as his health. I would think he's you know, progressed along and doing a nice job in terms of his health. And, and that always goes back to how they practice, You know, how the guys practice. I think he certainly um, showed that he was healthy enough to play, and he played with a high efficiency. Um, Still a couple decisions there that on boots and nakeds where he's got to make better decisions with the ball. But you can't argue with how he played on third down. Uh, he was efficient with the ball, made good decisions. Um, the one pick was late, um, but he did some good things. So, again, it'll be based on day-to-day, -day, how we practice and how guys practice in practice. Practice matters. Kirby, what, what's your, after watching the film, what was your level of concern on the shots downfield defensively and uh, you know winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups? Yeah, my level of concern is the same it was the first day we went out to practice. You don't give up long pass plays and win games. And you know th those same pass plays were <laughs> prevalent Clemson. They were just PIs, you know. So it's uh, it's just something that you have to work on. And you know people think that you have to uh, play somebody else to solve those problems. You have to have good technique, and you have to play with proper technique, and you have to uh, relieve some of that pressure with scheme. Um, but I'm a big believer in getting better at what you do. So, I mean, every time they throw that ball down the field, it's an opportunity for us to catch it. You know, the week before, Keith Ringo went up and caught that ball. And, you know, and you, you go, okay, well, you do that a couple times, how many of those will you see? And if, if I'm playing our defense and I'm struggling to run the ball, what's your answer going to be? I'm not going to continue to just run it. You know, I'm going to find ways to try to get one-on-one -on -one matchups and throw the ball. And you know, we say it all the time that that ball is just as much yours as it is theirs. We got to do a good job of not getting, not letting people get behind us. And that starts with a lot of technique. It's not a scheme thing. It's not a one-person thing. It's just playing your technique and playing it better than the guy across from you. Kirby. Uh two-parter kind of revolving around the tight ends is is Brock being as involved as he is is that more about Brock or is it about the tight ends and also just the the larger what what is your view of the tight ends involvement in offense these days and of of more spread in general yeah I think it's just based on who the tight end is like is spread made the tight end position more prevalent not necessarily because there's teams we play that do the same plays with a running back that we do with Brock, right? There's teams that we play that do the same plays with Brock. They do it with a receiver. Um, I, I can't comment. At the NFL, there's been more tight ends drafted in recent drafts, but it has nothing to do with the word spread. It has to do with a guy that's a viable blocker that has replaced the fullback in traditional offense. He can also play on special teams. He can run. He can catch. He can run after catch. He can block maybe a little, maybe a lot, depending on who it is. Um, the tight end position has evolved in the NFL. Therefore, it's trickled down to uh, high school and college offenses. But it's really about who the guy is, right? It's not like everybody wants to just say, well, the tight ends are good news more. The tight end. Well, if if you got a tight end that runs four five, then 
you know, then he presents a, a viable option. It's a threat in the passing game. And if he's physical and tough enough to block and block on the perimeter, I mean, you give me any player that's 235 pounds and can run four or five, then we'll find a way to use them. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with his skill set. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Vandy, of course. I mean, it's a team that's kind of struggled in the SEC over the last couple of years. Is it, what have you kind of seen from them with this new coaching staff? And also, how do you kind of keep you guys up for a game like this against a team that hasn't been playing very well as of late? Well, I'll start with Clark. I think he does a tremendous job. Number one, he's an alumnus of the school. He takes a lot of pride in the school, just like I do here. Uh, he's been tremendously successful in his career. Um, he's really smart. Uh, we've met with him and, and spent time with him as a coach. I know he knows football. He understands football. And he's trying to build a culture there uh, to be competitive in the SEC. Number one, that starts on the road recruiting, which he really hasn't gotten a chance to do. And it comes with buying in to the culture he creates as a coach. And I know they'll do a good job of that. The one thing that you consistently see when you go play at Vandy, it's always a really tough physical game. They've been that way when uh, James Franklin was there, when Derek was there. It'd be no different. These guys are going to play hard, play physical football. And uh, we don't get into measuring ourselves against the opponent. We measure ourselves against ourselves. And we're going to do that every single day in practice. Coach, what have you seen from Adam Anderson and Nolan Smith just in terms of you know becoming the leaders in that outside linebacker's room? In your experience, just what – what does it take for players to go from, you know, just a contributor in the rotation to, you know, sort of being the leaders at, in the pack at, you know, any position group? Experience. And they both have that. So those guys paid the price of experience in years past, and they've got confidence and experience now. So when you play in this system, you play under Coach Lanning, and he's coaching you every day, telling you the ins and outs of formation, stances, everything he can tell you. It, it helps you as a player, and they both are reaping the benefits of having been in the program. Hey, Coach, um, you've always uh, you know been real big about your teams being player driven when it comes to accountability and things of that nature. Just wondering how uh, is this team looking like it's uh, doing in that regard right now? Up and down. I mean, there's days it could be better. There's some days it's really good, and um, something we're work in progress. I mean. In terms of player-led leadership, player-led uh, events, player-led conversations, I mean, it's, it's never as good as I want it to be, and it's uh, never as bad as the worst it's been. So that's a hard measuring stick. It's it's day-to-day, -day and uh, it's something that we're constantly trying to grow. Like, you develop leaders, right? You develop them on how you do what you do in the off season, how much time you spend investing in them as a staff what time do you spend on an individual basis with each player letting them know what's important you get that in return on investment with the time they spend with the team and the time they lead the team when you're not around so we're, we're probably not where we need to be in that regard but it's something we'll always work on coach uh, following up on adam anderson i've been in enough uh coaches meetings that when they review tape to know how that probably went over when adam anderson goes downfield and runs through a blocker and makes the tackle he did this past Saturday in that game. Uh, can, can you just talk about what he lends on special teams and the importance of having starters in those roles play the way he does on special teams? Yeah, Adam's always done a tremendous job on special teams. I mean, he's a, he's a perfect for special teams, right? 6'4", 230, 235, runs really fast. Like, what more could you want than a fast big guy on special teams? And he's he's always taken a lot of pride in that. You know, Adam has reasserted himself on this team as someone who cares. He used to miss academics. Now he doesn't miss academics. He used to miss treatment. He doesn't miss treatment. You watch the growth of a player, and I've seen it since being here. From year one, they don't have a clue. Year two, they're still trying to figure it out. What do I do? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do, I don't want to do this. To year three, oh. So this is how you're supposed to do it. And he's he's in that year where it's like, I understand what I'm supposed to do, and I understand why it's important to do it that way. And uh, he's done that on special teams and defense. And he doesn't play so many snaps on defense that he can't play special teams. You know, that's part of the value in playing players uh, on offense and defense. Not every snap is that you get the value back in special teams. Kirby, I don't know that we've had an opportunity to ask you about the DGD fund. Um, you know, what does it say about your, the culture of your program that, that you've got players that are willing to use their platform to give back to their community? It doesn't surprise me at all because people know how great the University of Georgia is. And, you know, to have players that, that feel like, 
hey, here's my opportunity to use my platform to get people to give to the DGD fund so then I can in turn give back to the charity or organization that I take pride in. I think it says a lot about those guys that it's not really about them. They're not trying to put money in their pocket. They're trying to benefit some organization that's greater than themselves, and they're doing it through the Georgia name. I mean, I don't know anywhere in college football that, that guys are doing that. They're, they're not trying to benefit themselves. They're trying to benefit others. And any time you do that, I think it should be recognized. Coach, we saw Kiers Jackson finally come back to be on the field and not just in special teams. He was out there targeted a couple times. Can we expect to see his role grow more this week? And will we see Dom Blaylock come back this week? Well, Dom's dealing with a little bit of a hamstring. He had it uh, last week. He was really close. We thought he was actually ahead of Kiaris in terms of return. And then he had a little hamstring bothering him. I guess it was early last week. Um, it bothered him a little bit. And so he'll be out there trying to go again today. It's one of those things that when you haven't been back and you increase volume, you have to be careful. Um, but Kiaris did a good job in the game. You know, he had the two catches, did a great job. One of, <clears throat> one of the smart, intelligent plays to – declare down after catching the ball because the clock was going to run. If you can't go score, get down because we have a timeout. And he was very aware of the situation and uh, he's a good player. You know, and hey, you know what? Lab McConkey's doing a great job too. So those guys understand that we've got guys that are playing well. And as you work your way back, you you outwork the guy and outplay the guy in front of you and you get to do that. And Kiaris is still not 100%. I mean, he's, he's out there playing probably at 90, 95 and uh, continues to get better. Thanks. Uh, Coach, uh, you said after the game that you were going to reserve judgment on Nolan Smith until you saw the tape. What did the tape reveal there? He had two really big plays. He continues to uh, uh, play with great effort. Uh, he practices really hard. Um, he does things the right way in terms of physical toughness, not afraid of contact, uh, and continues to grow and get better. Um, I still think he can show some improvement in his uh, run defense and the way he strikes and plays blockers, six technique and things. But he's a great closer. He's a great recognition guy of plays coming, and he's a really good pass rusher. Kirby, you hear guys on your offense talking about how they have to go up against, you know, your very good defense in practice makes them better. How much good on good do you do, and has that changed through the years? Um, we do more now than we've done in the past, uh, but I'll be honest with you, the, the, the portal effect for us has been more at the skill positions for whatever reason. Um, so the two skill positions we're down numbers in. You know, we're, we're deficient at receiver and we're deficient at DB in terms of what we need to practice against each other with scout teams. So what happens is you say, what's the best way to get good on good reps, you have to go against each other. We, we we used to have three or four guys on the scout team. We would have a, you know, a Matt Landers. We'd have a Kiaris Jackson. We'd have, you know, guys down there that were really good players going against them. And now we're not able to do that because of our depth and our injuries. So we've chosen to take a route of, you know, going good on good more than we have in the past. We still do scout periods. And I still applaud and reward players who give great effort on scout teams. But our trenches on the scout teams are better than our skills on our scout teams. You opened by, uh, by saying you were glad to be back uh, in here uh, today with us. Um, can you say if that reflects um, improving trends on campus or, or with your team or, or, or how, that, how that stands? Yeah, our team has, has done much better since our, our last uh, spike, but I mean, that's a day to day. It's, con it's on a continuum, right? As soon as you say that, you'll get a text in 15 minutes that somebody's not feeling well. So my, my big thing is to not <clears throat> not assume anything and take as little risk as possible in terms of our team and uh, our exposures. I don't actually know how it's doing on campus, though. I don't. C Coach, can you elaborate more on Will Muschamp? There was, uh, I guess, Eli Drinkwitz said it should be illegal that he was added to your staff. Is it? Has it been that much of an advantage through the first three games? To be legal that he's added to our staff. So people that get lose their jobs shouldn't be able to get jobs? Oh, I got you. That's different. Uh, so I didn't get the context. That's probably that's more like Eli to be joking about that. I, I wouldn't think he'd be serious about that. No, he, what he's added is experience and value. I mean, you know, there's no price tag you can put on being a head coach at two places in the SEC, uh, being a defensive coordinator, winning national championships, going to uh, coach at Auburn and being all over. There's no price tag you can put on the value that, that he adds in terms of that. And uh, that's experience gained 
on our staff. That's also uh, relationships with players. He does a tremendous job of uh, keeping our players uh, confident and uh, in, in improving their skill set, not to mention what he brings to the table in recruiting. So he can fill a lot of roles, and he's a talented coach, and he's uh, very loyal. So I appreciate all he does. Um, can you update us on, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his first name, Davis, your linebacker's injury, I guess, last week? He, he suffered an injury, and, and is he out for the year? Uh, he's got a quad injury, yeah. He's going to be out for the season. And um, unfortunate injury on Monday, I guess, of last week, his uh, quad uh, became injured and had to have surgery. So he's going to be out. And uh, he's battled th through some hamstring injuries early in camp. Uh, and is a guy that's has had some bumps and bruises, but he was doing really well at the time he got injured. You know, he'd started on punt return. Uh, it was in the you know in the top four rotation at inside backer, and then uh, got injured. So it'll be spring for him. Just wanted to get uh, your thoughts on run game again after you had a chance to review the tape, and particularly with the O line play. Yeah, I thought that that we had a really good run game plan going into the game. Uh, really, you can say every run that the the thing we emphasized going into the week was IDs communication and pad level. Well, that that improved tremendously. Now we had uh, two times that we just didn't block the right people, like or we didn't block somebody, and those cannot happen. Those those moments where it's like, oh my God, we didn't even block the guy like that. You take those out, and it's, it's really good. But to rush for what we rush for, get hats on the right people. I think we're going to have to continue to work really hard on creating movement and displacement and being creative in our run game. But our guys ran the ball well. And they got a they got a good defensive line. They got good play, a lot of players we recruited. We'll face better defensive lines, but they, they got a good defensive line. And uh, I thought our guys did a better job with pad level and better job with IDs and communication, but nowhere near what it needs to be.